Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Yulia Velikanova. Today here with me uh, one of the most uh, important figure in the fashion industry, casting director Patricia Pilotti. Hi. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me in your beautiful, beautiful house. We are in South of France during the quarantine. <laughs> So let's um, remind uh, to our uh, audience first uh, for which big brands you worked already. Actually, the list is huge. So New York, it's Lacoste, Milan, Alberto Ferretti, Paris, Nina Ricci, Givenchy with Riccardo Tisci, Olivier Tascan, Carven, Lanvan, Mulberry. Now you have Kenzo uh, in London, Barbary with Ricardo Tisha again, and a lot of magazines and campaigns. And Valentino. Ah, Valentino, oh my God, Valentino, it's just right here. And Chanel. The first question is, uh, with which brand uh, you loved or liked to work the most? Maybe it's about designer, maybe it's about the team, maybe just uh, best memories of the show. Please share it with us. I think it's not about the show, it's more about the designer I was working with. You know, I was lucky because during the year I could build a relation with a few designers, with Riccardo Tisci, which I love, with Olivier Teskens, with Albert Elbaz, when he was at Lanvin, with Valentino, with Pier Paolo. So, you know, when you have a great relation with a, with a designer, it brings you a lot because there is a real exchange and you know you, you have the feeling that you collaborate to beautiful shows and of course they design in the collection but I think models that wear the clothes are very important too because you can you know give an image I mean the image is different following the, the different model you can have on the show so, so, and if you can choose uh, only one brand that you could work for the rest of your life, what it will be? Which brand? It's difficult to choose because I love all of them. Maybe, I think I love all of them. I mean, I miss uh, Albert because I think we did, I worked with him like almost 15 years and we did beauty, be beautiful things together. Olivier, who was Tayskens, was my first one. You know, when I started but now casting, you don't work with him anymore. I do. Oh, yeah? I still do. Okay. I still do. Sure, sure. Because because I love him. You know, he's really he's a friend. He's someone I admire because I think he's very very talented. I love Ricardo. I love Pierre. Pai. I mean, it's difficult yeah. to say which one you prefer. I understand. But before to become a casting director, uh, you start your career as a model. Exactly. With the uh, Karin Agency, right? I was with Karin Agency. And uh, uh, I don't know exactly, uh, but you or you uh, lived with Monica Bellucci or you worked with her? Monica Bellucci was with Karin. I was already in Paris. Monica is a bit younger, not much, but a bit younger than me. So she arrived when I was already modeling. So I remember at the time the, the director of the agency that was Ruth asked me to advise her she was Italian, I mean, she's Italian, I'm Italian, so, you know, it's something, I mean, you feel close when you're far from home. I mean, Paris is not that far, but, you know, still. So I was, you know, coaching her a little bit. Okay, so and uh, you're still friends with her now? I still see her once in a while mm -hmm. because I introduced her to Cartier, so I had the chance to work with her different times. I mean, of course, she has her own life, she's acting. Me, I have my own life, so I don't see her very much. But we're very happy to see each other when we meet, yeah, sure. Could you please uh, tell me about modeling at that time when you was working with Monica or with uh, just uh, when you was working as a model? It was 30 years ago, right? Yeah, no, even more. <laughs> could you please tell me the difference between modeling now and that time when you was working? It was completely different. It was different. We, you know, there was more freedom. You know, designer were their own. They had their own company. It was not 
like a huge business, like, I mean, I think everyone was more about creation, a creativity than about business. So, you know, career were much longer, model were less, so you could work, I mean, I've been working more than 10 years, yeah. and I had, my friends were the same, you know, we would travel with designers, we would, it was different. Do you like actually modeling now? Do I like modeling now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's very hard now. Mm -hmm. I think it was much easier at that time. Do you know that time we didn't have pre-collection? There was only, you know, fashion weeks. We still would, would do, you know, New York, London, Paris. But, you know, there was time in between and there was less pressure. I think now it's very, very difficult for, for girls. I mean, it's good when you work well because, of course, it's good. But, you know, you travel all the time because you have shows everywhere and shootings everywhere. It was less, you know, at that time, I mean, you, of course, you had work in New York, Milan and Paris, but still each country was very important. I have the feeling now that, you know, main photographers, they live in New York. So if you, for a great shooting, you have to leave to New York or to L.A. These poor girls, they are traveling all the time. And, you know, at that time, you would build a career slower. You know, it would take, you know, you would start and do casting and, and do, start, do show and then good shootings good campaign. Now you become famous in one season. Exactly. I mean, if you do a good season, I mean, the main show, then it means that you're going to get the campaign and you're going to get the best editorial. So suddenly your life is just exploding. It's just, you, I mean, for a young girl, it's very so difficult. So everything at the one season, too much, right? And that time you didn't travel that much. We would travel, but less. I mean, when you were working in Paris, you still had work in Paris. Now I have the feeling that you come to Paris for the show, maybe for some campaigns, of course, but most of the editorial, they're not in Paris, they're around the world. So I have the feeling that the girl needs to travel much more. So I think it's very tiring. And some of the girls, they cannot handle it. You know, they become too stressful, too stressed. And also a different thing, we didn't have social media. Ah, oh, right. Actually. So it was a big, big difference. So, I mean, if you wanted to see a show, you could, you had to be invited or you had some, some uh, TV. There was a, a, a lady, what was her name? I can't remember her name, but she was invited so you could see in, on TV some show, but you really needed to have the chance to be invited, otherwise, so now the difference that you have more copies, so you have more brands that are working like Zara, which I admire and I respect, but you know, they are still, I think, copying a little bit. So it's different, it's very, very different. I don't know if it's better or not better. And what do you think about uh, Instagram right now, the social media, which have a big link in fashion, so the model can be, um, the even models, they are like plus size or, for example, Balenciaga, they're taking a lot of models from the streets. What do you think about this trend now? I don't know. You know, I try to, to understand. I think if they do, probably it's good to do. I still think that as a client, you prefer to look like a beautiful girl. Yeah, I mean, not... I mean, a dream is beauty for me. But I guess it's, it's true, fashion is for everyone, so why not? Yeah, so then uh, let's talk about the beauty. Tell me please, uh, which qualities in models you admire? Can you describe your model, like top model of Patricia Pilotti? What I think that I, you know, the first thing, of course, to be a model, you need to be tall, you need to be, to have a certain body, because you know, to wear clothes, of course, but I think it's personality. Because, you know, for example, when I cast for shows, I see a lot, a lot of girls because I think everyone has to get their chance. But what stays or what, what I remember on a girl when she has something different, she has maybe more personality or maybe even a, something wrong that makes charm. So I don't think there is something special. I mean, I think it's just personality. Okay. And do you have your favorite model? 
Who is your favorite model if you have one? Of course, I don't have a favorite model. I think I love, you know what? I respect all of them because I think it's a lot of work to be a model. And it's not always easy because in this fashion business, not all the people is respectful. So I think for a young girl, it's very hard, you know, to, to meet people, to meet nice people, but to meet some sometimes unpolite people. So that's why I respect all of them. Now, maybe I have a special attachment to the girl that I started. You know, if they started working with me, uh, like first show, this? oh, many, oh, <laughs> many, lots, right? many, because I've been doing it for a long time. And, you know, I had the chance also to have designer that trusted me. Yeah. So when we found, when I found or I introduced a girl to some of my designer, like Olivia was very open, and Ricardo also, Pierpaolo also. You know, and I see them su su successful after. It's a bit of a proud. So, yeah. but and I'm always happy. Can you name like uh, three girls, for example? Three girls. That, you know, with, with Ricardo, we started many. Joan Small started with us. Oh, okay. uh, Grace Ball, uh, Lara Stone. I can name many. Okay. So, tell us please now the most important question. How come you become a casting director? Like a game. Okay. <laughs> Because, as you know, because you know well my family, my husband owns a company, uh, a production company for, for shows and, and big events. So when I decided to stop modeling, at the beginning I didn't want to work. I wanted to stay home, take care of the kids. You know, I'm Italian, so I still have this family thing. Family for, is very important for me. But um, after a year, I think he didn't like the idea of having me home doing nothing. So he pushed me, like a, it was like a game. One day he had a, a shooting that the client was asking, he, he had a client, and the client asked if they could take care of a booking of a, of a catalog with Claudia Schiffer. So he came home and he said to me, do you think you can do that? Oh. And I thought, I mean, why not? I mean, Claudia Schiffer is a model like everyone else. At that time she was known, but she was not this huge star like she is today. Oh. But, and they said, sure, I mean, book a Claudia Schiffer, you just call the agency, give the dates, the money, and that, that's it. And in fact, it was not that easy, because the shooting was in, uh, in Turkey, mm -hmm. she's German, so also at the time there was some politic problem with immigration. Anyway, it was not that easy, but I made it. So you were 30 years old when you started? I was 30, yeah, 31, 32, yeah. Okay. Because I always, always thought when I was modeling that I would start, stop at 30. 30 yeah, you told me one time. Because I always said I wanted to stop because the, before the people would, you know, don't want to see me anymore. Exactly. I wanted to stop myself, not that other people would decide me to stop. What do you like the most about your work? What is the most exciting thing in your job? The most exciting thing is, as you know, it's a hard work because I mean you have to cast, yeah, you have to you find have the girls. People working for you. How I many? have few, not that many. Huh? I have maybe five, six person working mm -hmm. with me, and among these people, there is two or three that are very, very close to me. I love all of them and they're working with me since 20, between 15 and 20 years. And what I like be, um, about them is also mentality. They are like me, they are respectful, they are hard worker, they have no ego. Some of them are Italians? No, no. none of them. Oh, I have a boy that comes from Italy. It's very funny because he was someone that was writing me all the time because he wanted to work with me and he was, he was, you know, I think he liked my way of working. So after a few times we met and it just happened. And then he's working with me regularly. So one boy Italian, that's it. Okay. Otherwise they are French, yeah. Because I live here since a long time. So. so, and what is the most exciting thing in your job? So the most exciting thing is just 10 minutes before the show, when I see all the girls dressed in beautiful clothes and so excited. And I think it's just a pleasure to look at that much beauty. You know, all these beautiful girls, beautiful collection. Because, you know, it's the only moment I see them all together. Because before you cast, then they come for fittings. 
so I see one at the time, but at that moment, they are more all made up, hair done, clothes beautiful, and they are so excited, and it's a beautiful atmosphere. So I love that. Have you ever argued with the designer about your choice? For example, you found a girl and you're sure she's a future superstar. And the designer probably disagree with you. What uh, you will do in this situation? What is the solution? Like how you figure out? Do you know, it never happened. Okay. Because sometimes if the designer is not really sure of my choice, you know, I would insist. Yeah. nicely insist because so I respect their point of view if they think they're not right then I cannot insist more than but I'm quite you know like when I have an idea I go for it yeah. and sometimes even with Ricardo he laughs because he says to me sometimes why you want her she looks like your cousin <laughs> <laughs> and I said yeah maybe she looks like my cousin so I said oh if he please you then let's go for her and, uh, there is a difference between casting for shows and castings for the editorials. Like, it's a, it's a different way of work. It's a different way because, of course, on a show you need to cast 40, 50, 60 models, sometimes more, and for a, for a shooting you need to have few. It's never that many. So, it's that difference. It depends what you have to shoot. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have to find... Do you know when you do a show, each girl, especially now that you don't do changing, I mean, every girl has one look, you need to find the person that is right for that look. Maybe when you do a shooting, you need to find models that are right for different looks, because normally shooting is few looks. And uh, do you think today uh, a girl have a chance to become uh, a supermodel for years, like to become a Nikon, like uh, Claudia Schiffer, Naomi Campbell, because even now, after 30 years, we're still talking about them as a Nikon in fashion industry, as a top model, supermodels for centuries. And uh, today, there is a chance, for example, a girl come, she start a season, it's a chance for her in 30 years to be a Claudia Schiffer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think, for, because we, we do have at the moment some girls that are, for the fashion business, icons. But they are not the same icons as this model of the 90s or 20, of 2000 were, like Claudia or Linda. Or, so I'm not sure that today we, the girl will have the same career. I'm not sure. I think they still can make money. Because if you get a contract for beauty, like, you know, like Gigi or Bella or, or Kendall, I'm not sure that in 20 years people will still know them. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not sure either. I think it was a different time. <laughs> At that time, you didn't have actress that made you dream. So those group of girls would make dream everyone. I think it was like, a, you know, they would replace... Uh, actress stars because if you think I mean if you try to find a star at that time there is not that many which if you look now for example a lot of beauty a lot of perfume they're using actress yeah. because I don't think you have a or, or they still use the, these girls like Kate Moss Naomi I mean this group of girls that were icons so I'm not sure and uh, is it true East Country Girls has less chance uh, than it was before. I don't think so. No, you don't think so? No. I think if you're a beautiful girl, it's going to still be a beautiful yes, I mean, girl. Look, look at Irina Shaik. She's Russian. Yes, and she's but beautiful. she started a long time ago and she's still here. And for example, but she didn't start that long time ago. Like 10 years ago, no? Yeah. yeah. But look at Steinberg. She's Russian. She's oh. doing... Steinberg, you know this ah, girl? Yes. Sophia Steinberg. But you don't think that she is a seasonable? She's probably not gonna, not gonna. Then I think there is f first beauty. But she's not beautiful for me. She is just a special. She's special. With your she look, is. She, gonna kill she is beautiful. I used. I worked with her before she became so famous when she, she was had not long hair, right? exactly. Yeah. She was much more classic. Yeah. And she was. She is beautiful. Okay. Now she found maybe some designer or some, I don't know who, 
some shooting decide to cut her hair to make a brunette so she's stronger she has a stronger look so that's why probably she's working more because maybe also people is looking for more difference you know not too classic i guess i guess but i used to work i mean i worked with her when she started and she mm -hmm. was i mean she was more classic let's say so if you look at her well she's beautiful so now she has this look and she walks like this yeah. so she has a, a style before she was not like no this. no before she was not like this okay so maybe she found the style that works so she's right if you are not a casting director like what you would do after modeling who you could become like what you could do family thing or have you ever thought about it it's different to, 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 to tell because it's difficult because I never had to choose. You know, I became a model just by chance because I was studying and I, was, I needed to, to make money because, you know, my family, my father was quite strict. And, you know, when I started university, as I was, I mean, I was, until there, I was, I mean, living with my family, my father was very strict, I couldn't go out, huh? So when I started university in Bologna, I, myself, I party a lot. Okay. So my study were not as successful that my family was expecting. And you study what? Uh, economia e commercio is like, um, what is that in French, economia e commercio in English? Like a business? Business, business yeah, it's like business, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> So it was like to make some money. I could. I was like looking for a job, any job, you know, cashier, babysitter. Oh. I mean, my dream was to to work in a jewelry shop. That was my big dream. Okay. Because I love jewelry. But now you do even better because you work with Cartier. Exactly, I work now. So your dream yeah. come true in a more in level. A, exactly. So when I started modeling, it was just by chance. You know, when I started looking for, they introduced me to some people, and then you know, it was like just happened. I mean, I'm not gonna, the story is too long, so, but it just happened, so I started modeling. I didn't even realize, because, you know, I come from a little city in Italy, so modeling was like something you couldn't even imagine. Yeah. And then I moved <clears> to <throat> Paris, thinking to stay for two weeks, and now I'm, it's over almost 40 years that I'm living in Paris, because I'm married, and, and then when I stopped modeling, I started to do this job just by chance. So did I ever think what I would have done? Maybe, maybe a, a jewel shop, okay. maybe an antique shop would have, a gallery, this I would have liked. Ah, because your jewelry is your passion. So. I love jewels, <coughs> I love. Yeah. So. And uh, if, imagine you have a daughter, like she is 16 years old, uh, would you give her to work as a model? No, no. Why? Because if I... she is like tall, beautiful, like, I mean, of course, if she wants to, I would not say no, yeah. but I wouldn't push her, no. I think it's too hard. I think it's, you know, at our time, you could build something. You could work for more years. It, it, there was a, the, a career was more believable. Exactly. I mean, you would start not at 15, because me, I started, I was like 19, 20, 19. So I was already adult. I was already, I had an education, I, had, I went to school, I had, I was prepared. I mean, even if it's new for me, but I was prepared. I knew I had to pay attention, never touch, touch drugs. I always, I never had problem of people that abuse or try to abuse. I mean, because I was adult, so I knew that this was good, that this was not good. So I was, it was, for me, it was a normal job. I think that now there is so many models. <clears throat> the career, except for a few maybe, they're very short. Yeah. So I think when you are a young girl and you quit school, that's why even when I meet young girls, I, I tell them you have to finish school, listen to your parents, don't do your this business. It's a serious business, but don't forget school. You have to study because you have a life after that. At my time, you had time enough to make enough money. I mean, I bought my apartment in Paris with my money, the money I made with being a model. So at least, you know, you could build something and then you had the time to start doing something else. Now, if you 
start modeling at 16 or 17 and at 21 you finished because career are very short. I think it's very difficult for a, for a girl to understand that at 20 years old, 21 years old, it's over. Because you, you, you start a life which is a dreaming life and then it's finished immediately and I think it's very hard to handle. So that's why I think it's not, I wouldn't advise to do it. But for example, um, the girl start, she's mm -hmm. for example 18 years old, what advice you would give her for modeling career? I would tell her to be very serious, to be very polite. It's a, it's a real business, it's a lot of money that you, they can invest on you. Oh, it's a, you know, that was the side that I didn't understand when I was modeling and I think it's very interesting now to see the other side. It's a lot of work of a lot of people, you know, designers, um, people that, how do you say, them, so, I mean, they, they, they prepared all these clothes, all the production, all the, it's a lot of money invested in it and it's a lot of on your, on your responsibility. So you have to be serious, have a healthy life, uh, be generous, respect people. If they want the people to respect you, you have to respect them and never take it personal. If you go on a casting and it doesn't work, it doesn't mean that you're not good. It means maybe that you don't correspond of, of what they are looking for. Me, I remember when I was a model, once or I was cancelled from a show mm -hmm. and, and for me it was something so terrible because I thought I was judged personally. And I don't think any of you is judged personally. I think you correspond or not or to something they are looking for. That's the most difficult part, not to take it personal. It's true that you're judged on, your, on what you look like, but you know, maybe they look for someone taller or some, someone smaller or someone with freckles or someone with red hair. And so never take it personal. Just do your job the best you can do and, and, and that's it. I think uh, it was great, great advice and a lot of girls would be happy to know that. And thank you very much uh, for your time. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's well, you're welcome. <laughs> And the guys, uh, it was Patricia Pilotti. My name is Yulia Vilikanova. Please subscribe, put likes, and uh, write comments. What do you think uh, about our interview? Thank you. Bye. Bye.